Right, today we're going to talk about how to use Microsoft Word properly in order to write a professional, good looking report. Microsoft Word is actually a very excellent software for doing this and has some very good features if you know how to use them. So, the first thing that you'll need to do is change the default font. Um, the default font that comes straight out of the box for Microsoft Word is this one, which is called Calibri. And this should be changed to a serif font. So I've changed it here to Time New Roman, which is an example of a serif font. Uh, what this means, I will show you now. Let me just make this text a little bit bigger. Now you can see here, if I compare the bottom one, the edges of the letters are all straight, they just sort of cut off sharply. Whereas in the top one, the the letters have these little thingies on the end of them. Um, like over here in the Y, this, the end of the Y is a bit round and the points of the Z are turned up a little bit. That is called a serif font and it just makes the, um, the font that much easier to read. It looks a little bit more professional and it looks a little bit more proper as well. Um, you will notice that I have my text on, uh, on justified as well, full justification, so it lines up both the left and the right. Um, 12 point font is appropriate uh, and single line spacing usually as well. So, what I like to do is if here if you click on normal text, um, right click modify, I've already made these modifications. So, over there you can select the font, the default size, default color as well, but you can just leave that to black, uh, justification, line spacing, and then if you click here, new documents based on this template, then it'll apply this default across all of them. You'll notice that I've made a similar modification to the other ones as well. The heading 1, heading 2, title, and subtitle all use Times New Roman in this document template that I'm using at the moment. So, the first thing that you should do when writing a report is create a title page. So what I like to do is about halfway down or so, click on title and then um, press enter and then more lines and then click subtitle. So that gives you a nice professional looking title page for your report. You, um, that This is sufficient, you don't need to put in extra extra sheets where each group member is individually signed. So the next thing is insert table. Most of you got this right but in my experience you can select a table um, however big that you need it to be and type things in it name, student, number and signature and resize the table a little bit. Um, by going here and just and write your name. So in my case, J. Smith, and, um, and then you can leave that block open for yourself to sign to this tab that says Page Layout. There's a section here that says Breaks. So under under Section Break. There's one that says next page, insert a section break and start the new section on the next page. Click on that. So if you go back to your header and footer, you'll see that the first page is now section 1 and the, and the next page is section 2. Uh, so here in section 2 is where your front matter will begin, including your table of contents. So I'm un under this tab, references, over here, you can choose an automatic built-in table of contents. I prefer this one, number, number two, that says table of contents. So click on that. And it will moan and complain because we haven't actually added any text in our document yet. Okay, that's fine. But you can see that the uh, space is reserved for the table of contents. So what I'm going to do now is exactly the same as what I did previously. Here in page layout, breaks, next page, I want to insert a new section. Coming back to the home tab, and I'm going to start with heading 1. 
this is where you get to start to put your headings for your documents. So I want to pull heading one in for production. And you'll see that it's nicely um, justified and it looks all neat. Copy the same paragraph again just to fill it out a little bit. And that will be your introduction. Click on heading one again and you can start with the next um, section. So as to what sections you should use, this depends very much on the kind of report that you're writing. If you're writing a scientific report, you may have come across this in your physics modules, for example, if you're doing an experiment. Then it is appropriate to write, to have headings such as AIM and apparatus and method. Um, for the purposes of our digital systems module, um, this is not inappropriate, but it's not always the most, um, not always the best approach, uh, because it, it can be a little bit clumsy. If you would like to, um, to do something like that, to use this approach, I'm just going to pull this up with text. Uh, quickly, so that you can see what it's supposed to look like. If you would like to use this approach, then you need to understand what each of these sections are used for. So, your introduction um, is the purpose of the introduction is to to introduce the topic, uh, to give a brief overview of what the importance of it is. So for example, in my chosen topic of a Hamming code error detector, this is where I would spend one or two sentences, not very long, describing why the Hamming code exists and uh, what its purpose is and where it may be used. Um, something I forgot to mention, before you, you put an introduction, might be a good idea to put an abstract. So an abstract is a short section of text um, just for uh, which gives a brief summary of the, the, the work that is contained in the report. So it is different from an introduction and generally you should write an abstract last it'll it'll generally between 50 and 100 words and it will summarize everything that is in your report so it'll be it'll tell me at a glance what is there in this document summarizes the the, the efforts to build a Hamming code error detector Designs are presented, simulations are presented, um, results analyzed and discussed. It is it is found that, and a, a brief sentence or two um, describing your conclusion. So that is the purpose of an abstract. It's not always compulsory, but if you decide to include it, please make it um, proper. Now the aim section. If you're performing an experiment in physics, for example, you want to test the law of conservation of momentum. Then you would describe this here, it's generally just one or two sentences describing what you're setting out to do. Um, this can be appropriate as well for, for your digital systems module. Again, if you if you want to use this section, please just do it properly. Um, the aim, don't talk about any soft things. So first of all, don't talk about the assignment that you are given. We know what the assignment is, we set it up. Um, related con um, relate your your aim directly to the technical work. So, for example, the aim of this experiment was to construct a Hamming code error detector. That is not that is even sufficient. You can elaborate on that just a little bit. Don't talk about how it's to familiarize your you with seventy four thousand series. 7400 series, pardon, 
components or to provide you a learning experience that those are soft things they're not related to the technical work they're valuable yes but don't put them in your report an apparatus section now again in the in the physics this is purposed to give you uh, or the reader of the report the op opportunity and option to reproduce your experiment if he wants to and the specific components that you use in physics would be important for example what size ball bearings you use or what pendulum so that the, the, the circumstances of your experiment can be reproduced as accurately as possible in digital systems this is very much an abstraction so going into too much specifics isn't necessary here um, so just, just bear that in mind the next section method again we're not testing physical principles here. The, the principles that we are testing are very much abstract. So you would talk about, in this for instance, uh, your, your design, your um, Boolean algebra, your quantum maps if you've used them, whatever the case is, and some, some circuit schematics. But you wouldn't necessarily talk about the specifics of where you push the, the integrated circuits into the breadboards. That is not particularly important to the principle that is testing, so it's best to leave that out. Um, if you have, um, so for, so along that line, your design and simulation. Now you'll realize from having done a little bit of digital design that design and simulation are really one in the same thing. So you can include them in the same heading, as a heading by themselves, or really as a subheading of your method section. So in this section you would likely have some some diagrams and I'm going to take this opportunity and insert a diagram now. So if you want to insert some sort of figure, insert picture and I'm just going to insert this one it has nothing, of course, to do with digital systems, but it's a fig it's a figure and it'll, it demonstrates the point. So you can resize it a little bit so that it's the size that you think is appropriate. Don't make the figures too small; they need to be clear, clear to see. But obviously, don't make them too large so that your um, your report becomes lengthier than what it needs to be. Okay, so if you insert a picture, it takes you automatically to the picture format tab. Tab. Go away from this. Go to go here to references and click on insert caption. So it'll give you a caption figure one. A diagram of two guitars. Give the picture or the diagram a reasonably um, uh, descriptive um, caption. The the general rule of thumb is that. If the reader has to look at the picture and the caption alone, he should be able to understand what is going on. I generally like to um, make this a little bit larger and have it use a black color as well. Uh, I don't know why I haven't changed it yet. So that's that. Then in your in your text, somewhere either immediately before or soon after your picture you should refer to the picture in your text. So you have just typed a paragraph describing what you uh, 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 what you have done and you've inserted a, a diagram uh, of a schematic or whatever the case is and then you should include somewhere a sentence saying a schematic of the um, principle demonstrated is shown in. Now don't type figure one Use the feature of Microsoft Word. References, cross reference. Okay, then you select um, figure, select only label and number, figure one, insert. And you'll notice there that figure one has appeared. Um, if, you, if you highlight it, you'll notice that this is actually a, um, a field. And why this is convenient is Often you won't type your report in sequence. So you'll insert this figure here, you'll refer to it, and 
you decide perhaps you need a, a, a picture later on in, in a previous section. And if you've typed manually figure one, then you'll need to go and go through your whole um, document and update the numbers by yourself. However, wh what Microsoft Word does, if you just uh, right click here, you can update field, and if there are uh, a different number of figures, it'll update it for you, or some little press of mine at the moment. Obviously, there aren't, so uh, nothing will be changed. Anyway, carrying on, um, get to a new heading. Now, your heading after your design, you would might uh, design and simulation. You might say uh, call it results. Now, results section describes the outcomes of the experiment that you are performing. So, in the physics, you would record the, the velocities and masses. Well, not masses, the velocities of the various components, for example, how far they moved or the, um, the frequency of oscillation of the pendulum. In your digital systems module, the, um, the results section will not be as extensive. It, it is sufficient to say, in this case, the work. And in, in the case that it didn't. There, there were a few that didn't work properly. Please don't waffle. Please don't describe in paragraphs and paragraphs how you built and rebuilt your, your circuits and things like that, and the the late nights and the sleepless tears that you cried and, and that sort of thing. Th that those th those things don't belong in a technical report. Um. If you'd like, you can summarize it with just like a short truth table. It's not necessary to include pages and pages of photos uh, documenting which LEDs were lit up. Okay. It's conventional to include a section for discussion. Um, this discussion section should not introduce any new information. A lot of people here, I noticed in the reports that I marked, this is the point where they started talking about things that they hadn't mentioned in previous sections. Everything in your discussion should refer back to um, stuff that is that has already been noted. If there was a problem, if it didn't work properly, then this should be noted in your section on results. If there was a challenge in the design, that should be noted in your design section. And your discussion should discuss these things. For example, how you interpret your results. Uh, if there's something wrong, what you can do to improve it or fix it next time. This is what your discussion section is for. It is not for the introduction of any new information. And then finally, um, conclusion. Now, if you're testing a hypoth hypothesis, as you would be in physics, for example, you're testing the um, conservation of momentum, then your discussion would be short. Say, in the experiment performed, the conservation of momentum has been confirmed. In a in a report designing or des describing a design practical, uh, this is less of a of an issue. If you are testing something new, then you in your conclusion section you will conclude that this is an improvement on the state of the art, or this is a technique that works, or this is a technique that sort of works but needs improvement. If you're not testing anything groundbreaking, so for example, you're building a three-bit add or having code error, error detector. These are things that have been done many times before, so your conclusion can be almost a repeat of your abstract, but not quite. Um, so your what will be happening here is just a brief summary. A, a Hamming error code detector was constructed. Um, it was shown to work with uh, codes bit long. It could detect one bit errors and correct them and detect two bit errors. That's it. That's all you need to put in your conclusion. Your references, the last section. Now, Microsoft Word has in it a number of referencing tools, and I should have been talking about this uh, along the way. Most of your references will be sort of in the beginning, generally, in your introduction if you've done a literature study. Later on, design and simulation, because this is your all your own work, um, you shouldn't really be referencing too many things, you won't be quoting too many things. Now, if you have not 
cited any references in the text. Um, then you don't even need to include a reference section. Some of the things that you'll uh, do obviously will be fairly obvious and you won't need to, to cite any references to prove them. However, perhaps you have used an equation that you have sourced from a textbook or you have sourced a statement from a piece of literature and you would like to include a reference for that. Now, in this tab, References, there's a, a bibliography section as well. First of all, select it a reference style. We use either Harvard or IEEE. IEEE is preferred. Then click on insert citation. So first go to your statement where you, where you need to insert a citation and the general rule is that it will come in square brackets with a number just before the full stop. Insert citation, add new source. Then Word will give you a little source uh, uh, window where you can type in. So Say you used a chapter in a book, the books, or then this gives you all the all relevant information there. And you'll notice that it has inserted a, a field that can be updated. Now, the way that this works is they're numbered in the order of, of, of appearance. If later on in the same document you would like to cite the same thing again, you'll notice that the, the site, the source that you've uh, inserted has come there and these will be numbered in order of their appearance. Now if you go down to the bottom bibliography and just click on one of them and you will notice that it has inserted your references in the proper IEEE style the, I generally like to change this heading to references, but it's not uh, it's not critical. Right. So now we've finished with the bulk of the text of the report. What we would like to do now is uh, just format it up a little bit nicely. You will notice that um, if you have the side pane open, so view navigation pane, that as we've been going, the the headings that we've been used are appearing over here. This top one goes to like the top of the document, abstract, introduction. And you can use this to get around quickly within your document. Now that we've um, actually included some headings, we can come up to the table of contents and click on update table. And you'll see that this has, designed, has put in a table of contents for us. Now the convention is when we have a, um, a section or rather front matter and the, the main matter of the report um, you can start numbering from page one on, on the first actual page and the uh, table of contents is numbered with Roman numerals so if you click on the header and footer here this, that highlights the header and the footer click on link to previous and if you click then in the, in the footer also un, uh, unlink it from the previous section Insert page number. Now, bottom of page, I prefer to insert it on the right hand side. Then right click on that and say format page numbers. Then don't say continue from previous section, say start at one. Okay, so that gives page one, page two, etc. So that's the main matter of the report. If you carry on a little bit upwards, you can do the same thing for your table of contents. Uh, in larger reports, your table of contents may spill over several pages, or you may have a table of figures and a table of tables. If, uh, tables are inserted in exactly the same way as figures are. They, they need captions as well so that you can refer to them in the text. So I'm also going to say uh, remove the link to previous um, option in, in the section one. I'm going to insert page number at the bottom and I'm going to go format page numbers. Again, start at one. But the the front matter has the is normally numbered in Roman numerals. So click click OK, and you'll notice that my table of contents there has a page number I. Your title page won't have a page number at all. So you can just leave that leave that out. Double click on the on the main matter again to get us out of that. Update table of contents. Update entire table. 
and you'll notice that the page numbers there have been updated all automatically for you. Um, that is more or less it. So I've covered uh, proper use of, of section headings. If you have within your section some other things that you want to talk about, so for example, the most um, uh, the most likely place that you would find this is in your design and simulation section. So perhaps you've designed several things, and you can use heading two to say design of component one and talk about that a little bit and break it up and make it a little bit more easy to um, to follow. The idea is that if you have a a look at the table of contents, I should be able to, as a reader of the report, tell by your table of contents exactly where I want to be in your report. And I should be ev even able to, from your section headings, get a little bit of an idea of what you are um, what you are trying to trying to accomplish in the report. So that is to make it as easy for yourself to write as possible, um, as easy for uh, the reader to read and believe me if you've got someone like me trying to uh, evaluate your report the easier to read that it is the better the better it will go for you and make it look some make it look professional um, that always helps as well just uh, on the topic of figures a uh, couple of words on diagrams try and, and make them not too confusing so for example um, I came across Quite a lot of them that uh, tried to stick the whole circuit diagram of the three bit adder into one circuit uh, diagram straight down to the individual gate level. For a three bit adder, this you can still get away with this, but for more complex circuits, it's not a good idea. It's, a, it's better to give a diagram of a very simple portion of the set of the circuit and draw a box around it, have some inputs and outputs and then use a, a block diagram for higher level, for, for system level diagrams. This will make your life a lot easier and it will make your diagram a lot clearer. Try to avoid um, pasting screenshots. I personally like to use software called Inkscape for um, drawing circuit diagrams. An example of a circuit diagram, I've used some, some circuit components that I found from the web. The nice thing about Inkscape is that your circuit diagrams then come out very clean. They're, they're vector based, not raster based. So it doesn't matter how much you zoom in, they still keep a nice, um, a nice line and they don't uh, pixelate. And this also helps with printing. Some people I noticed had their circuit diagrams from, um, from the website logically or from Logisim or even from AUKAD. You can do this as long as it's neat, but it usually doesn't end up looking very neat. So I would prefer that you didn't. Okay, thanks. This is uh, this has been a brief introduction into Microsoft Word and using it properly. I hope that you've benefited from this. Uh, it might be a good idea to, to save a document like this as a template so that you don't need to start from scratch every time that you have to write a report and that you know that everything is already properly formatted. Okay, I hope that your reports in future are better.